Hey guys, welcome to the culinary studio at Jefferson Marketplace. My name is Tito and today we're going to focus on some local restaurants and one of them is going to be Jackie O's. And I have Jeff here, executive chef at Jackie O's and he's going to show us how to do fish and chips. Uh, we're going to use our Firefly beer, but I'm not going to expand a little more. I'm going to let Jeff do all the talking here. So how are we doing, man? Good, good. Uh, so with, uh, we use our Firefly, it's our amber uh, ale. It's kind of, it's dry hops, has a bit more flavor to it than like normal yeah. ambers, you know. So what we want to do, do is hand cut these. You want them, you don't want them too thin, but you don't want them too thick, otherwise they won't cook right. Um, so you just want to go through and cut them all. And also with this, you want to make them as uniform as possible, and that's a good uh, technique or whatnot that to use in all cooking because the things are all the same size and they cook at the same rate and so, then you don't have to sit there and temp each individual item because they're all random sizes. Yeah, I think right now we're over a little bit over a quarter inch. Yeah, it's this, about yeah. quarter yeah. to almost half inch. Yeah. You don't want them too big. And then uh, just want to cut them in even fries. And also the key to a good french fry is you got to soak them in water to kind of pull the starch out. What kind of potatoes do you guys use at uh, Jackie O's? Uh, we use, we used to use Idaho potatoes when we went into a Kittenbeck yeah. uh, potato. It's a bit more waxy, mm -hmm. but still starchy enough where it'll still get crispy. Yeah. But the, the little bit of waxiness of the potato kind of prevents it from absorbing too much oil. Oh. So it can be cooked more yeah. and not get too soggy. And by waxy, do you mean a little more creamier to yeah, yeah, yeah. potato? Yeah, yeah well, I, like, an, like an Idaho potato is considered like a starchy potato. Yeah, yeah. Like a red skin is kind of like a waxy. Yeah. You can just kind of tell by touching them and looking at them. Yeah. And we saw about waxy potatoes like the Yukon Gold or the red yeah. potatoes. Those are good for roasting and baking. These are better for frying or like if you're going to make homemade chips as That's well. Right. And today we're at the, about 325 degrees in our setup here. We have a thermometer just so we make sure we're consistent. I learned the hard way not to just eyeball it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, you know, use a, invest in a thermometer. It's not really that expensive. So what we're going to do now is rinse uh, He's under some cold water to pull off some excess starch. Normally in a restaurant, you'll let these sit overnight, but since you don't have that much time, it doesn't matter too much, but the more starch you pull out, the better texture you get. Yeah. And like when you soak them, you'll notice the water starts oh, yeah. to get the... It's already getting there, huh? Gets a little cloudy, and what that is is the starch coming out. Usually when I'm when I'm soaked for a good minute or so, mm -hmm. and this will get any excess dirt off of them if you didn't do that before you, <laughs> you cut them. And we did pre-rinse these potatoes. Yeah. Usually potatoes are clean, but they'll still have a little bit of residual dust on them. They grow in in dirt, so it's, yeah, it's not uncommon to find. Yeah. So what you want to do is. They've soaked, you want to drain all the water off because hot oil and water do not mix. So you want to get them nice and much excess water off as possible. And then you just want to make sure your oil is at about 300 to 325 because you're not looking to get make them gold at this point. You just want them to be fully cooked. And so you just want to add them in. Slowly. <laughs> you just want to add them uh, in small batches at a time. And then that way, if you overcrowd your fryer, then they don't really, then your oil will drop too fast and won't yeah. be, be able to recover. So we'll do these in two batches. Yeah. And you can see that oil is almost getting there pretty high. That we usually yeah. want to leave yourself about, I think, at least a third of the pan as height so that there's enough room for the bubbles to come out. Because Otherwise, most of trouble. the bubbles are forming because it's water escaping yeah. from, from the oil. So this is how a lot of fires start during Thanksgiving yeah. when people uh, don't thaw their turkeys. Exactly. So then you're kind of, 
You can time this if you want. We usually go for about two minutes at Jackie O's. I just kind of go by, you can also kind of do it by looking at the yeah. potato when it starts to get a little translucent, you know, it's close. And also when the bubbles start to go down, you know, it's pretty close to being done. It's a good way to, to uh, judge just by eyesight, but for consistency, it's usually best to use a timer. What kind of oil do you guys fry with a typical canola oil or do you need We, we use a soybean oil. Soybean oil. A clear soybean oil, there's yeah. like a creamy one you can mm. get sometimes, but you don't have it. Sometimes uh, it can be a little tricky to get out. So you wanna... <laughs> Come on, man. Yeah, it's looking good. It's starting to see through oh, yeah. a little bit. What does that soybean oil do for your uh, the texture or flavor or anything like that? Or... Uh, it's kind of neutral, yeah. and I find that people have less food. Allergies, and allergies yeah, that's right. to soybean oil. Mm -hmm. You get canola. Like uh, if you use like peanut oil, you get better flavor. Yeah. And it doesn't. It has a high smoke point, so you don't have to worry about the oil sure. burning. But then, anyone with a nut allergy can't have anything out of your deep fryer. That's right. So. So then, what you want to do once they come out, you want to like, drain as much oil off as possible, and then put them onto a paper towel line tray just to kind of pull off all the excess oil and if they're sitting in a flat like this they will cool down much faster yeah. than they will if they're in a big bunch you know and yeah. you know because if they're in a big bunch all the steam gets trapped mm -hmm. between the layers of the potatoes and also one thing you want to do is check your thermometer if you want to make sure your oil returns back to your Let's turn you back up a little bit here The job done about 280, you want to get back up to 300, but oil, it's a heat conductor, so it usually responds yeah. pretty quickly. Yeah, you don't want to get too antsy and put that in there and yeah. have really greasy fries. Yeah, because if it, your oil's not hot enough, then it absorbs too much oil, and then you get soggy, gross, yeah. greasy fries. Well, and then while these potatoes are cooling down. I think you got one more there hanging out. <laughs> Uh, I can get these get out, out of here. and we can turn this back up to 350 and as we're waiting for that to respond, we can make our beer batter and tartar sauce. Mm. So neat. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. And then, um, all right, so with our beer batter, first thing you want to add to your bowl is your beer because it'll help mix everything in. If you put your dry stuff in first, it kind of gets stuck to the bottom of the bowl. But if you put your wet stuff in first, it allows for easier mixing. And then, so this is our Firefly. And this um, here is baking soda. It's baking powder, cornstarch, and flour. And uh, have it all mixed together just to make it e easier and just kind of whisk in a little bit at a time. If you put too much in there, it'll get kind of clumpy. You know, like this clumpy batter. Because when it fries up, if it's clumpy, you'll get little white specks in there, and it doesn't look very nice. Take your time, that's right. Yeah. You know, if like it's good food, it, you can't rush it. It takes, right. you know. Kind of like a pancake batter. You don't want to overwork it. You, yeah. You might right develop it. a little bit too much gluten, and then yeah, and then it gets too dense. Yeah. This is our batter. As you can tell, it's nice, nice. and smooth. All the foam is gone from the beer. There's no big clumps of anything. Mm. You just want to set this off to the side so we can um, kind of come up to room temp a bit more so you get a nicer fry on your fish. And we're going to make our tartar sauce. Yeah, there's three, three cups, cups of mayo in, in here. And what we're going to add is sambal paste, which is like a fermented pepper paste. Mm. And that's kind of gives it a little bit of zing. Most tartar sauces is just like onions and relish and a little bit of lemon juice. So you have our relish, which is a common thing for tartar sauce. Mm. Add a little bit of salt to this. Black pepper. And then uh, juice of a wine. Turn you guys down here. Put that guy in there. And then 
it gets a little bit of red onion. Dice this up real quick. Dirty dishes out of the way. Thank you, chef. Do well, you want a pretty small dice on the onion since it's a dip? A brood wall is the technical term for what you're looking for. And uh, down that way. So what you're doing is you're making it easier for to get consistent cuts. So what you want to do is you cut lengthwise like this on the onion and then you want to go against the other way and what you're that way you kind of create like little squares so when you cut into the onion they're all already the same size and then you just want to go back through it like so and I just want to any uh, odds and ends you want to kind of chop up again we do this in like in a Roboku or like a food processor, and it kind of helps break up any of these chunks. That's right. Make it a little nicer. But when you're at home, you don't have those mm -hmm. things to work with. That's a good, pretty good right knife there. skills, yeah? Yeah, exactly. And knife skills is a very uh, perishable skill. Yeah. If you don't keep up on it, you'll kind of lose your, uh, I don't know, like your stroke yeah, to it, right. you know? So I'm going to take a whisk, whisk this all together. And use your spatula to scrape down the sides of the bowl so you get everything mixed in there nice and evenly. And also with this, it's best if it sits for a little bit so all the flavors can kind of meld and come together. Usually what I like to do is fry the fish first so that I can kind of calm down before you eat it because while you're, you can take that out and you can fry it, fry, right. fry, fry your fries. So you, if you do it the, the other way, you cook your fries and your fries will be soggy and then you bite into your fish and it'll like burn your mouth off because right. it's raging hot. So I usually find that's the best order to, to do things in. So we, what we have here is cod and uh, usually, when you find cod, it's frozen because it comes from the ocean and we're in Ohio and we're a landlocked state. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna move on to frying the uh, fish. What you wanna do first is wear gloves because this could get kind of messy. So you're dealing with flour and like wet fish, so it will kind of make a dough on your hands if you don't yeah. do this. So what you wanna do is you have your filet here, it's kind of big. You can cook it like this would be good for like one whole thing but what the process we're, we're doing is uh we're frying it and you kind of want to eat it with your hands i'm going to cut into a more, more bite-sized piece and we'll cut it lengthways and then we'll cut it oh, in half sorry. that way and we'll put it in the flour and we'll go through and cut each piece of fish and that's good i think it gives you guys more surface area to give some more batter yeah exactly more, more texture you get, you get more yeah. more batter more fit like I don't know. You get more of everything per yeah, bite. Yeah, yeah. Do a few orders here. I might as well cut them all up. One more, just in, yeah. just in case, right? Yeah. Cool. So we got that. What you want to do is kind of like now toss them in the flour. This is the main reason you got your, uh, your gloves on. It gets kind of, you get kind of gross. You have a little pan here to knock off any excess flour. Just make sure you kind of double check all your pieces in there. Sometimes they'll get stuck together and you'll get two wet pieces touching each other. And then when you put your batter on, it doesn't really, well, you'll have a naked spot you know, yep. on your fish. Put that in there. And what we have here is just a perforated pan that allows you to remove the excess flour by shaking it off. What I do at home too is I'll take a big mixing bowl and, and then a, a colander and you just shake it off like that. Yeah. Just like if you're doing wings or anything that needs dredging. And also, you don't want to put this all in your batter at once yeah. because uh, it will make a big mess. And you won't get <laughs> equal like uh, 
distribution of uh, batter on your fish. So what you want to do is you get as much as you want to fry it once into your batter. So there's less jumping across. Yeah. So we'll do we'll do two orders. So we'll put about eight pieces in there. So you got four pieces per piece of fish. One more. Thanks to be a scout. Thank you, chef. And then you kind of want to just toss a little bit, make sure it's evenly coated. So then once you get that, it's going to shake, shake off your excess batter. And then you kind of want to hold it for a second in the oil mm. so it won't stick to the bottom of the pan. That's right. So shake. Yeah, even if you have a and Then kind of pull it around. Exactly. You have a deep fryer at home you don't want to let it land on that basket and stick to it so you lose a lot of that good batter that you work for so you kind of like hold it for a second or two and then let the edge kind of cook and it'll be good to go and they're going to rise up so sometimes you can you might have like a basket you could use to put in there to keep them all submerged or you can just kind of wait, and then once one side looks like it's starting to get cold, golden brown, you can just kind of flip them over sometimes. And if you're unsure and you want to use a ther thermometer to check if the fish is done, mm -hmm. uh, it should be 145 in the center of the fish. But usually if they're, once it's golden brown, and by cutting them into these smaller pieces, they're basically going to be cooked. Yeah. Once they're to the color of your likeness. Yeah. And you know, if you're doing this for the first time and you're not really familiar with cooking fish, um, you can always break open one. You know, you can cheat the first few times you do this recipe. Yeah. It's worth it than, uh, and if, if you don't have a thermometer, of course, it's worth it than to get, you know, risk getting sick or anything like that. And you want to have a paper towel down or two to help absorb any excess oil that comes off of this. And that'll one, keep uh, the fish crispy, and two, keep your plate from getting gross. And also this will continue to cook a little bit as you take it out, because this batter is really hot, covered in oil. Chef, do you ever get any other types of fish in uh, from the local area? Yeah, uh, we get fish from a purveyor called Northern Hazarat. They get it from all over the world, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes, uh, like two weeks ago, we had some walleye from Lake Erie. Yeah. Um, last week we had swordfish. You know, it just kind of depends week to week of what the purveyor has. Because yeah. not a lot of places in Athens have fresh fish that's, right. that, that's not just like caught or fried, you know, so. What the chef's doing is scooping out all the excess uh, fryer bits so it doesn't, so they don't burn and ruin your oil. Or you can give them away to your customers like yeah. Long John Servers. Exactly. <laughs> if, if you had to suggest to the audience what kind of fish not to fry like this, which, which would you say? Oh yeah. We're, we're, Using cod, but yeah. like, I don't know, like a, you know, because it's kind of like a flaky fish. Yeah. So if you like would put it on the grill, it would just fall fall apart. Yeah. yeah. So any you know, kind of like white flaky fish, I don't know, yeah. like halibut would be, but I don't know if you want to deep fry yeah. halibut, yeah. you know. But, Seventeen dollars a pound. Probably yeah. Not. But cod's a good fish to fry because it's it's has a lot of moisture, like has a lot of fat content to it. Yeah. So one it won't one it'll stay moist. Two, it's cheap and uh, tastes good too. It's very yeah. mild, doesn't have a very fishy pronounced flavor like salmon does. Mm. It's not saying salmon is fishy, but mm. has a much more pronounced flavor than yeah. a, lot, a lot of other fishes do. Get you another plate. Now this beer batter, can you keep it overnight or make it ahead of time and yes. save part, it for the next part day? Part of or? the reason, because normally when you make beer batter at home, you don't put uh, like baking powder yeah. in it because you'll get a lot of your leavening agent from the, uh, the, car the natural so. car carbonation yeah. of the beer. Mm. But since in a restaurant, you're not going to be making fresh beer batter every few hours. It's mm. not very 
time or cost is efficient, yeah. you will uh, you'll put like baking powder in there, kind of keep it from to make it still rise. Yeah. You know? So how That's long would it last if I made this batch, you know, and um, kept it in my fridge? Yeah, I wouldn't hold it for more than like a week. Today we're actually cooking with uh, canola oil. Chef Jeff said he cooks with uh, soybean oil, but just making sure you, you find an oil that's uh, as neutral in flavor as possible, but has a high enough uh, uh, burning point that you can fry with, so. Yeah, if you were to use like olive oil, it smokes at 325, yeah. so that your be, be, the oil would be burnt yeah. by the time you, you were done, which would give you like a yeah. weird flavor. Something else you can do at your house to make a little screen that you can put over top of these, it'll kind of help the oil from splattering oh, all, yeah. all, all, all of your, your counter. That's right, less mess for the kitchen. Well, these look like they're about done. Yeah. One thing you can you can hear, maybe see too, is that some of that splashing, so that basically that moisture is coming out of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Pretty good indicator telling us about it's done about almost thing. done, yeah. Yeah, get that plate yep. here, Chef. We can get these out. Burn you. Yeah. So we're about to do our French fries here. Um, our oil is back up to 400. These have cooled down enough down to room temp. And uh, I think our fryer is probably large enough to probably do these all in yep. one batch. Um, we blanched them in two batches. That's just kind of because it's a lower temp. Mm. It's going to drop faster. If you do it in smaller batches, you'll end up with nicer results. Yeah. Once we get this in there, we can. It's always the. Yeah, yeah, let's get yeah, it. The, uh, <laughs> always use your spider. If you drop it in there, you'll get splatter and melt the skin off your hands and yep. then once that safety first <laughs> drop these in there nice bubbling of the oil let you know it's up to temp we had the oil hot enough it won't drop too much but when we put these in there these will still get crispy exactly just kind of stir these up as you can tell these are oh, starting yeah, to get nice color. and golden brown as compared to the first time we fried them they stay nice and White, yeah, I guess would be the proper color of a potato. What you this do is uh, keeping keeping it moving too, especially even if you have a fryer basket. Keeping it moving is really important because that's like that's part of the reason you take all that starch out. You don't take out your starch out; all your fries will kind of bunch together yeah. and fry together. Yeah. So two ways you can avoid that: is soak them in water to pull the starch out, and two, stir them as you cook them. Because once they're stuck together and you break them apart, you're going to break your fries up and you're going to have a bunch of tiny little french fries. That's right. Yeah. Unless you're into that thing. So yeah. If you are, it's good for you. These are almost done. So you just want to basically cook these to however dark you, you like them. Some people like soggy gold, or gold yeah. french fries. Some people like them well done and extra crispy. Kind of like them in, on the in-between, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Keep that texture. Yeah. These are almost there. A few more minutes. As, as well as you can tell with this, is when the bubbles start to get smaller, mm. you know there's less moisture in there and it's getting closer and closer to being done. Nice. And also with this, when you take them out, you want to drain as much oil off them as possible. Mm. So you want to use a spider or, or a, a, a sieve. And you also want to have paper towels down to absorb any residual grease that stays on them. And also, you want to make sure you salt them when they come out, when the oil is still hot, so the salt will stick to the fries. You wait till they're cold, the salt this falls, yeah. this falls right off. So these look like they're yeah. about perfect, so we'll start scraping these now. And if you're at home and you have a baking rack, you can use that to elevate the fry to get as much yeah. grease to drip off as possible. Especially if you, yeah. you, you're making a lot of fries, it helps to have that wire rack to, to spread it out so it doesn't get soggy if you're making a bunch of fish and chips for your guests. Uh, these are still kind of hot. A little song. And last batch out here. Down over here, and then there. A little bit of salt. Now we're good to. Now we can plate our food. Get a little 
french fries here. Pile them up on our plate. Take some of our fish. And then get a little ramekin of our tartar sauce. Nice. Beautiful. You can serve that with a slice of lime if you want, or yeah. lemon, depending on your flavor. The only reason I suggest lime is because there's lime juice and tartar sauce. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm sure you could pair it with your uh, the beer that you cooked with, and yeah, exactly. it'd be perfect, right? Exactly. You can have a nice ice cold beer next to it. Yeah. Good to go. Nice. Well, yeah. thanks, Chef. You're welcome. And thanks for joining us, and I hope you get to try out this recipe. And if you're of the age to, to buy a beer, um, but if you can't, you can always substitute it with awesome. I've, I've tried Sprite in the past or find some recipes that don't use alcohol. Or you could use like soda water That's and right. do like a tempura instead yeah. of a beer batter. Yeah. It's a little lighter too, so. You know. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you want to see more videos on cooking techniques and recipes, follow us at OU Dining at Facebook and all their social media networks. And uh, please come to Jack O's and try the actual product made in-house. In, in yeah. We also get served with our hand-cut coleslaw. And uh, follow us on Facebook and uh, look forward to seeing you in the restaurant. Thank you.